<laughs> hey, this is Freddie from Ashes of Aries, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Okay. Yeah, here I am, like, um, basically in Siberia at the moment. It's fucking ah. awful. <laughs> it is <laughs> cold, it is freezing, it is wet, and it is dark, so... So what is that beer you're drinking? It is Ali Cock, like a very basic, easy to drink. Which one is this? I don't know. Ah, but just basic beer. Nice. Basic beer. Anyway. Oh, that was so yeah, I'm drinking coffee because it's too early here. Yeah, same here. <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, let's talk is- about Go ahead. I just said wusses. Go ahead. Yeah, wusses. I'll join you later. I'll catch up with no problem at all. But so let's talk about uh, Ashes of Airs. Emperors of Fools, Emperors and Fools, I'm sorry, is due out what next week? Uh came out on the twenty first of January. It's oh, been 20- out a couple of weeks. Okay. I yeah. thought it was twenty first of February I had. So now that it's out, how do you feel about it? And are you satisfied with the way it turned out, or is there something you wish you could have gone back and done or had more time for? No, we're definitely satisfied. It's one of those things we've had it in the books, you know, for so long that we've had plenty of time to go back and fix anything that we've heard. And we did that before it got released. So we're, we're, I mean, we're really happy with it. Um, We're happy with all of our releases, but I think each one we're just progressing and getting even happier with the result as each album comes out. That's great. And what was it like doing this record as a, you know, during all the nonsense that we've been through being locked away and doing whatever, as opposed to what it, you know, in the past, how you guys have done your records? Well, I mean, th- we did our last our last album exactly the same way, way before all this stuff happened, because Matt's, you know, on the East Coast in Delaware. I'm basically in Phoenix. So we were always passing files back and forth. And and so when this crap hit the planet, we were already, uh, you know, experts on how to do this. So it was really nothing for us. So we'd already done it twice. Right. Do you... Uh... So you've always done the more electronic stuff and not getting in the room together and banging things off each other? Yeah, because, you know, when we started Ash- Ashes of Aries almost 10 years ago, Matt and I have careers and it's not like, you know, at the time I was living in New Hampshire, so we're probably, I don't know, six, seven hour drive away. We couldn't just get together and jam. It wasn't right. feasible. So we just wrote stuff on our own and shared it with each other. And I like that. No, that sounds like crap. Back and forth with each other until we came up with stuff we both liked interesting Rena. yeah that that is interesting you know but you said you have a career yeah. what is your career i'm a civil engineer so i'm what in does the what does that mean what does that what does a civil engineer do so what i do is like let's say they take a big piece of empty land and you want to put a thousand houses on it so we got to design the roadways all the drainage all the sewer and water you know, make sure everything doesn't flood and make sure the company doesn't get sued for designing something wrong. It's a lot of math and a lot of nerdy stuff involved, but it's fun. I've been doing, I it, love for almost, that. Yeah, I've been doing it for almost 30 years. So it's, uh, it's fun. Good for you. Yeah, no, it is. And like, you know, it, it must be like super cool to be able to like leave a mark like that, like in the form of infrastructure you oh, know, yeah. that, you know, it's going to be there. Like, you know, when time goes on, things change, of course, but you know, something you designed could be there for like a hundred years. How many people can say that, right. you know? Yeah, it's cool driving by something and going, yeah, I designed all that. You know, it's kind of fun. Just like an album you put out, and, you know, years later, you're here. You're like, yeah, that was us. It's kind of cool. That's fucking awesome. So is it just, it's Arizona where, where you do this designing? Yeah, I mean, I've done it, you know, I lived all over the country, but there's Arizona is where I am and where I've lived most of my life. So I'm a licensed, licensed engineer here and yeah, it's pretty fun. That's what, what keeps you in Arizona? Not that there's anything wrong with Arizona, but what, why have you stayed for so long? Well, I mean, I moved here from Hawaii when I was young. Um, then um, my wife and I moved to Texas, and then we moved to New Hampshire, which we really love. But I was working from home for a company in Arizona, and they made me a really good offer to move back and be in the office. So we had to take it. Oh, there you go. And it doesn't matter where you are if you're doing things, you know, uh, via technology and emailing stuff back and forth, right? Uh, For the most part. I mean, with engineering, it's kind of good to be where you're designing because you can go drive out to the site and see. Oh, no, 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 no. I was actually talking about band-wise. It it doesn't (laughs) matter, right? You could be wherever. 
be wherever, you know, when I joined Iced Earth, I was living in Texas and uh, Matt was in Delaware. John was in Indiana. So was the other guitar player. And Brent was in Florida. So everybody was all over the country. You know, and then when Stu joined Iced Earth, he was in Canada. And so everybody was all over. And you can do that nowadays. You just practice at home, get together, rehearse a few hours and you're ready to go. That's uh, I mean, that's an amazing thing. But how does it. I guess, feel when you're putting you've done a bunch of records and you've done a lot of stuff, but two two part question. How do you not write the same record over and over again? Do you put a lot of effort into trying to distance yourself from the last release and also. How do you feel your music impacts your fans? Is there something you want them to walk away with after listening to uh, Ashes of Aries record? Um, the, the first part. So the, at least the way I do it to try to not sound like the last thing is when I'm getting in songwriting mode, I'll just listen to our albums over and over again. Just leave them on a loop. Even though I know the songs really well, and when I start writing something, it's going to be obvious. Oh, no, that sounds too much like this. You know, change it up a bit. So it's kind of just by drilling all the older stuff into my head, it kind of helps me know what not to do, you know? Right. Um, and for the other part, it's like, uh, what was it? <laughs> so let's, uh, I don't know if it was the same exact wording, but after somebody listens, after one of your fans listens to one of your records, what do you want them to walk away with? Is there a takeaway or a message? Or... Uh, for me, not really. It's just, you know, the way Matt and I write, we have to write it so that each of us likes it. And, you know, we have to love what we do because you're never going to please anybody. You can, you know, you can get a comment saying you guys should sound more like this. Well, if we did that, there'd be a thousand people saying you guys should sound more like this. Right. So we have to just do what we think is good. And we just hope that the fans appreciate that. Know it's coming from an honest place and we're not trying to appease this or that. We're, we're trying to make music that we like ourselves to listen to and that we hope others will enjoy too. Um, we don't really, you know, I definitely don't want to push any messages on anybody. If, if they take a feeling or an emotion from a song, that's great. If it means something to them, even better. But our goal is not to do that. We're just doing what we like. Excellent. What do you, what do you think the, the feeling or emotion or, or takeaway from gone would be? Um, it's, it, you know, it's dark, it's melancholic, it's uh, kind of depressing and, uh, you know, it's cool. I like it. Um, <laughs> it's cool. You know, and, and I know so many people can relate to stuff like that. And a lot of people, you know, shared stories with us about, you know, people they've lost and I guess how the song has helped them. I don't know how it helped them, but they just, they get a good feeling out of listening to it and stuff. So it really makes us feel good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I completely understand what you mean. Um, so what do, what do you, what would you say was the inspiration for gone or, or is there something that you derive inspiration from in general, or is it just a bunch of things and whatever seems to be well, acute and going on in your guys's life? Well, I'm going to loosely speak for Matt here. Cause I know I can't speak fully for him, but you know, that was kind of his, his song. He, he wrote it a long time ago. The acoustic parts sent me all that. Um, so, you know, his line of work, as a police officer, it was just, you know, from what I'm interpreting from talking to him, it's, uh, it's kind of like, you know, a message to his family, you know, and like how his kids are him living on through him and stuff like that, you know, and that in that way, he's always going to be with, with them, no matter what happens, no matter if he's here or somewhere else. Right. So that's kind of where it came from. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I guess in today's culture, that's a, uh... A more powerful song as well and has a whole different meaning especially written from the law enforcement perspective because i am in actually in law enforcement as well i'm a dispatcher and oh you know, nice and everything has changed and so a song like that definitely speaks to people differently i think now oh definitely yeah it's and it, and you know 10 years from now it could relate to people in a totally different way it's just you never know how it's going to be do you find i know you said the music is dark and melancholy whatever do you find it cathartic being on the writing side of it like just dumping your your shit into it and getting it off your chest or not really um not really i mean I, you know it sounds shitty to say but i'm pretty much happy you know happy upbeat person and i guess luckily i haven't had a lot in my life to bring. oh look at the cute dog <laughs> i've had a lot in my life to bring me down which <laughs> You know, I don't know. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I've been I'm, I've been lucky that way. Right. So I don't really I've always just liked dark, you know, gloomy kind of music. So yeah. that's just something I like to spit out. I'm a very 
caveman kind of person. I just, <laughs> I don't have a lot of depth or emotion in me. <laughs> you know, just, oh, Jesus. What is, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's there. You just don't know, like, or... Or, or maybe, maybe not or maybe it's just not as the parent yeah. as some people. I don't know. It's very simple. Yeah, yeah. And also, there's nothing wrong. Like, not everybody needs to be a fucking bleeding heart. No, no. Four seven. You know, like that's not the point. But like, don't don't talk down on yourself. No, no, I'm not. I'm not at all. I don't. You know, some people could get you know emotional and blubbery and cry over something. I'll just look over and go, that sucks. You know, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you uh? What do you have planned to take uh? Ashes of Airs out on the road or Aries out on the road. Is that something that's possible now that things are opening up or is that still not? Yeah, we're actually trying to work on some stuff right now. Um, what sucks is we contact, I've contacted about 20 different venues and maybe two have gotten back to me. Um, so we're really trying to do stuff, but some of these places, you know, you go on their websites and for booking contact here and you never hear from them. So do you think that's because they're, you think that's because there's so many people now trying the book or do you think that's because they're not fully open or don't really give a shit yet? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, my biggest pet peeve is communication. Just email back. Say, or, right. just, just say, you guys suck. We want to have you here. That's fine. Just something, you know, just right. we've gotten your email. We'll get back to you. Just, but the lack of communication in some of these places just is what frustrates me. Right. No, I get it. Completely get it. Completely yeah. get it. Also kind of feel for the venues though. Cause like, you know, the, like amount of gigs that's been moved around yeah. and you know it's postponed and this is your new date and it's just all piling up oh, you know on top yeah. of each other you know that i can i can just imagine that they're drowning in those emails but still i'm with you like just replying that we got this we'll get back to you maybe it's, yeah, it's right. better than fucking silence or just I an get it. auto email just an automatic thing you have pre-typed <laughs> right. in an auto one reply. it's all it takes right just be right. human about it yeah there you go you're not a fucking caveman you want to behavior oh, <laughs> you know like, yeah, <laughs> the thing you yearn for. there's a crack in the armor i'm not saying i'm a human i'm just saying they should be human about it, <laughs> <laughs> Get it. <laughs> so what's next for uh what's next for you guys then if you're not really looking at have anything firmly booked up you got more singles gonna drop or how does it work from here um it depends we're gonna i mean we we have one video out. We may have another one, wink wink, coming out soon. Um, you heard it here definitely first. Try it. Huh? You heard it here first. That's right. So uh, we are definitely going to try to book other shows at other places if this one area we're looking at doesn't work out. So we're going to definitely go for book shows. As far as Europe and stuff, we got to wait until all that calms down. There's too many bands booking stuff and canceling. Too many. Oh yeah. We just can't even. We can't spend money on flights. We can't spend money on getting crew. That we're gonna have to pay up front and lose it all, so it doesn't yeah. count. Yeah, I, but I agree. Writing new stuff, um, as far as if we're gonna do a single or not, that's up to the label. Like the last, we did an EP, you know, with Dust in the Wind and all that uh, last year. That was at the label's request. They said, "Why don't you guys do, you know, a little EP?" So we did. If they want us to do that again, we will. But otherwise, we're just gonna start writing another full length. Awesome. That's all that I've good. got. Rain, you have anything else? Ready? I thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it so much. Um, Good luck with the record, and hopefully we get to see you soon because I'm here in the States, so hopefully we'll get to see you around this way at least. Yep, I got relatives in Charlottesville, so maybe I'll bump into you sometime. Yeah, right here. Yep. All, All right. right. Be well. Thanks for taking the time. Take care. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. Thanks. It was lovely meeting you. Bye. Bye.